Hey, I'm Gaur and welcome to the first video in the beginner's guide to digital development. So by the end of this video, you will hopefully have made your very first working DCTL, but to get there, we must first cover some ground. So what does DCTL even stand for? It's Da Vinci Color Transform Language, which is a custom programming language made to create custom color grading tools for the Mitchell Resolve. But we also call the tools made within said language DCTLs, so it might get a bit confusing at first. But if I say, hey, look at this amazing DCTL I made, I don't mean that I made a whole custom programming language, but that I made a custom color grading tool. So hope you get that. Now, what can these details actually do? They can continuously input pixel data, manipulate it, and output pixel data. What this implies is that first, because it has to be continuous, your computer has to handle running these details real time. So you can't do very computational, computationally expensive tasks such as blurring, which technically is possible, but it isn't, these details aren't the best way of doing it. And secondly, you can't output files or metadata or input it for that matter. So in that sense, you are kind of limited to just taking pixel data one pixel at a time and outputting pixel data. So basically the RGB values of a pixel. Now, what do you need to actually start making these details? First off, you will need the paid to studio version of the Vinci Resolve. This is just because the free version does not support these details at all. They are kind of a pro feature. Secondly, you'll need a code editor, which is basically a program that allows you to write the DC tells. That could either be Sublime Text, Visual Studio Code, or for Windows users, Notepad++. I personally use Visual Studio Code, but I'll have download links for all three down below, and you can choose what you like. And finally, you'll need a ton of patience, because programming as it is, well, it can be tedious at times, because the first time you write a line of code, it most likely won't work. You'll run into errors, you'll have to find those errors, do some debugging, and well, then hopefully on the 25th try, it'll actually run. But we'll get into that, just keep it in mind. So, welcome to VS Code. This is the code editor I like to work with, and what I have open here is boilerplate.dctl, which is a file that I have also provided in the description of this video. What we call a boilerplate is the bare minimum code that's required for a program to work. But before I delve into what all of these things mean, I'd like to tell VS Code how to highlight this code so it would be easier to read. Unfortunately, VS Code doesn't know what TC tells are, but the next best thing we can do is find a very similar programming language that it does know about and make it think that DCTL files are actually in that programming language. Through testing, I found that C Sharp is a good candidate. And to tell this to VS Code, you'll want to press Control or Command K and then M. This opens a quick actions menu. You can choose Configure File Association for .dctl and find C Sharp. And magically, your code is now colorful. So what exactly are we looking at? This whole thing is what we call a function, which is a piece of code, such as this, enclosed in curly brackets, such as these, and the whole thing is given a name, such as transform. In this case, transform is the function that DaVinci Resolve calls for every single pixel of every single frame when it's shown. And it's not just calling this function, it's giving us many different parameters we can use. These parameters are of different variable types, including int or integer, meaning whole numbers like 0, 1, 2, or negative numbers, minus 1, minus 2, minus a billion, and then also floats, which are numbers with many decimal places, which is also how we store RGB values between 0 and 1. And then this function itself has a variable type float3, in this case, which is the variable 
it is expected to return to DaVinci Resolve. And float free is essentially just three floats put together into one variable and is often used to store a pixel's color as an RGB triplet. And the variables that DaVinci gives us are the width and height of the timeline, the X and Y coordinates of the current pixel being processed and the RGB values, aka the color of the pixel being processed. And in this boilerplate, what I'm doing is creating two new variables. The first one is called inRGB and is equal to the input red, green and blue channel values. Note that I use a built-in function called make float free to turn free floats into a float free and another float free called out, which I set equal to inRGB. So essentially it's also equal to a float free made up of the red, green and blue channels. And finally, I return the out variable. Essentially every function that you will ever create will have to have at least one return line, which returns a value, which is the same type as is promised in the declaration of the function. So in this case, we promise to return a float free and indeed return out, which is of type float free. And to see if this digital works, you'll want to save it inside of your LUTs folder, restart resolve, which you'll have to do every time you add a new DCTL. Here I have a demo project. I'll create a new node, drag on an OFX called DCTL, and from the DCTL list, choose the boilerplate DCTL. You probably won't have as many DCTLs as I do. And what you'll see is that this DCTL does exactly nothing to the image. It doesn't modify it in any way. If we do want to see something change, we could, for example, take the out variable. Inside of that variable, take the first color channel, which you can take by typing dot x. The three color channels are x, y, and z, and setting it equal to, for example, one. I'll hit Ctrl S, head over to the Vinci Resolve, hit reload, and still nothing happens. So most likely I've made some kind of an error. And to help with figuring out which error I made, we have a log file, which logs all kinds of events inside of DaVinci Resolve. And to make viewing of said log file easier, I recommend installing an extension for VS Code called Log Viewer. Search Log Viewer, hit install, and then you have this gear icon where you'll find extension settings. And inside of here, you'll want to choose Log Viewer Watch and hit edit in settings.json. This is the place where you'll have to define where the log file you want log viewer to monitor is located and also give it a name. To do this, you'll want to find the log viewer.watch and inside of there, add these lines. Of course, you'll want to change the pattern to the location of your log file. Here are the locations for each operating system and then you can give it a name, but I'll keep it as resolvedebug.txt. And after doing that and saving, you should find that on the left side, you have this icon called Log Viewer, and inside of there, you should have resolvedebug.txt or whichever name you gave it. Double click it, and you should now see the log file. This log file will have all kinds of info, not only things related to DCTLs, but in this case, what you're looking for is ever detected in the compilation of, and then the path to your DCTL. In this case, we only have one error, and looking around, we have a few warnings, but then we have error expected as semicolon. Oh shit. It seems that I have missed a semicolon somewhere, and given that the only new line I wrote is this one, yep, indeed, I have missed a semicolon at the end of this line, which is a mistake very easy to happen, but well, semicolons are mandatory at the end of every code line. So now, if I open up Resolve and hit Reload DCTL, you can see that the red color channel value of every pixel in this image is set to 1, meaning the maximum. Great! We have made our first DCTL that does something, but I wouldn't say it's very useful. So let's try doing something a bit more complex. In the description, you will find these, which are the equations 
for the lift, gamma, gain and offset wheels. This is what's happening under the hood when you turn the primary wheels. But to use these inside of our DCTL code, we'll have to do some modifications. So first off, I want to get rid of these names at the beginning. To do this, you could, of course, select and delete everyone individually, but it's faster to hold down your middle mouse button and drag. This allows for vertical selection. Select all of these and hit delete. Then, as we can see, instead of in, we have in RGB. So I'll copy that, command or control C, and replace all of the in variables with it. Then we have lift, gamma gain and offset, which are the number values of the user input. But in this case, we don't have any user input yet. So let's just create some variables, some floats called lift equal to zero. And when defining floats, you want to always include the F at the end of the number. Let's do a float gamma equal to 0.0 F float gain and float offset. Then we want to add some semicolons at the end. And finally, right now, this code could be running, but nothing is being modified by these equations. So we'll also want to add out equals in front. So we're setting the out variable to in RGB times and whatever else is happening. Well, actually in this case, well, the first one could be the in RGB. The next one will be overwritten again by in RGB and in RGB and in RGB. So in this case, we would actually want to have the input of these equations be out or where we last left off. So in theory, we now have seemingly implemented these equations. Let's save and head over to the Metro Resolve and see if anything works and it doesn't. Well, let's go back open our resolve debug and one error detected. Okay, what can we see here? Error, no operate, operator caret matches these operands. Well, this symbol called the caret is used to take one number to the power of another. But unfortunately, this symbol does not exist in this programming language. So instead, there's a built-in function called underscore pow or power float. And as with any function, we'll want to add some parentheses and a semicolon. And inside it's expecting two variables, which we already have laid out. So I can just copy them in here, separated by a comma, and I'll delete what we don't need. So now if I hit save, head over to DaVinci Resolve, hit reload, and still nothing. Okay, what is it now? We had one error, we fixed it, and we ended up with two errors. That's interesting. So let's see what we have here. No suitable conversion from float free to float right. So what we're trying to do here is take a float free and set it equal to a float. And in addition, we're trying to use a float free inside of this function, which also expects floats. So what can we do to fix this? We can copy this line by either Control C, new line, paste. There's a faster way. Hold down Alt or Option and Shift and press the down arrow key twice. So now we have duplicated the line two times. And then we'll want to only work on one part of the out float free at a time. So we'll do dot X, dot Y, and dot z and do the same in here so dot x dot y and dot z so now we're only working on one color channel at a time when it comes to the gamma equation so i'll hit ctrl s open up davinci reload and finally something's happening but we have a black screen so is this what we expected well, if we look at the primary color wheels, we'll actually notice that the default values for lift is zero, gamma is zero, but for gain it's one, and for offset it's 25. Now, if we look at our variables, 
lift and gamma are indeed zero, but gain is also zero, which we'd want to have at one, and offset is at zero, which to start off we do want to have at zero, which means the same thing as the 25 inside of DaVinci Resolve. So if we save now and head over and reload, we can see that the before and after is exactly the same, meaning that we have found default settings that do nothing, which is actually really good because we have a starting point. And now I can try out different values. Let's do 1.1, save, go back to resolve, and to quickly switch between programs, you can use Alt-Tab, hit reload, and now the image is a tiny bit brighter. Let's set that back to 1.0 and do a lift of 0 0.5. And again, as you can see, it seems to mimic what the built-in controls are doing. And to see if they're working exactly the same, what you can do is create a new node, try to set, for example, lift 0 0.5 and comparing the two. And as you can see, there is a difference. So maybe it's the case that Da Vinci is multiplying or dividing the input value by something. So let's try half of that, 0.25. And comparing these two, they are indeed very similar. And to make sure, let's grab a steel of the built-in lift, enable our lift, and then do a wipe between the two. And we can indeed see that they are identical. Well, there you go. I hope you got our first DCTL working. Though, if you did face problems that you couldn't solve, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll try to help you out. See you next time.